Today, we're gonna to be adding something new to my network and we're gonna be adding a pie hole. Now, this is something that I've done on my previous network when I was at my other house, but on the new network, I haven't set one up yet. Wanted to do a video on it. And this isn't gonna be an in-depth tutorial on how to set a pie hole from start to finish. There's some really great tutorials out there, including one from Crosstalk that I will leave down in the description below. This is mainly just gonna be a little bit of an overview of what I'm personally doing. Um, some very quick setups on my end and then showing the before and after on my network. Now, what is Pi-hole? And in very simple terms, it is a Linux based operating system that operates kind of like a DNS sinkhole. If you don't know what a DNS is, it's basically like a master list of IP addresses and websites. When you go to a website, it looks it up on that list and goes, oh, okay, that website is for this IP address. We're going to send it there. Um, Pi-hole replaces that for you to help you block particular types of traffic like advertising, malware, tracking, telemetry, and really anything that you end up putting on your block lists. All right, so we're gonna use a fresh browser without any extensions because a lot of extensions do a lot of blocking for you depending on the extensions you use. I use quite a few blocking ones as already, um, but I'm gonna go to this website here um, and I'm gonna retest it even though I just ran it. But right now it's blocking a total, my network on its own is blocking about three to 4% of the things that can be tracked, whether that's ads, um, analytics, error trackers, social trackers, a mix, things from OEMs and so on. Um, so we're gonna come back to here once we do all the setup and we're gonna see how much that percentage changes. So as the name suggests, this project was originally developed with Raspberry Pis in mind, but it does not have to be used on a Raspberry Pi. It can run on anything that uses the compatible OSs, which are on Pi-Hole's documentation. I am gonna be using a Raspberry Pi, and unfortunately, I can't find my lower end Raspberry Pi 2, which is what I planned on using. So for now, I'm gonna use my Pi 4 that I had, um, that I usually use for like retro gaming stuff. I'm gonna use this for now. Once I find the Pi 2, I'm just gonna switch the SD card over, but we've got this. And then I have a four gigabyte SD card from SanDisk, it's a pretty decent one. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use a decent SD card for this, but the size isn't really important because Pi Hole uses less than, I believe, two gigabytes. So get the smallest, but you know, good quality SD card that you can use. Now, again, I did mention the crosstalk post, and that is a fantastic way to set up your pie hole. If you're interested in it, again, I will leave a link down in the description below. You can also go ahead and use pie holes official documentation. I will also leave that in the description. Um, I've used both of them in the past to set up pie holes, um, and they're both great. The crosstalk stuff really adds a lot more context and a few extra options and kind of explains things a little bit nicer as well. So I do highly suggest it. All right, so as I mentioned, this is gonna be very brief. We're gonna choose our device. For now, we'll say it's on the Pi 4. We're gonna go and choose Pi OS Lite 64 bit so it doesn't have a GUI or anything. It's as light as possible. And make sure you select the right storage device because if you don't, you're gonna override anything that's on that device. So you'll lose something if you don't mean to use that one. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna edit settings here. Now I'm just gonna call this one Pi Hole 1. Uh, and the reason I'm calling it Pi Hole 1 is it is often suggested to be a really good idea to have at least two Pi Hole devices on your network because if one of them goes down for whatever reason, you're gonna lose access to the internet unless you go ahead and update your DNS settings again. So having a backup one is always something handy to have. And what I plan on doing is setting up a second instance of Pi Hole on my server so that if the Raspberry Pi ends up going down at any point, at least the server should be up in order to fill in that void until I get the Pi back up and running. All right, the only other thing that we are going to do is we're gonna turn off telemetry and I'm going to enable SSH so that I could do this all remotely without having to plug into the Pi itself. And we're going to go ahead, I set up my username and password. We're gonna save that and we're gonna say yes and yes. So this process will take anywhere from, you know, a couple minutes to maybe like five, 10 minutes. So go ahead and do something else. Once it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my Pi 4. I'm gonna go and plug this into my switch 
Um, and we'll hop in really quickly into the SSH. Um, I'm gonna be using putty for that and we're gonna set up a few quick things. Again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. We're gonna set up the DNS um, and we're gonna quickly set up Unbound as well. And then we will show what the end result's like. All right, so we were able to get into our pie hole and I'm gonna end up doing a few things. I'm going to update the Pi OS. I am going to set a static IP and then we're gonna go ahead and get Pi hole installed. All right, so we're back in here. We've got Pi Hole set up. It's been running for a little while. I went and ate some lunch. Um, as you can see, it's already getting tons of queries. It's doing lots of blocking. My ad list domains is a much higher number than normal because I did all the white listing and black listing um, using guide from Crosstalk to kind of start that process. I looked at the commonly blocked and commonly whitelisted stuff on the Pi Hole website as well. Got that all set up. Now, if we go ahead and look at our utilization, we can see that on the Pi 4, it is barely using any CPU. It's using 0.2% and using 0.2% of the memory as well. So this is why I plan on putting it on an older Pi. You could put it on a Pi 2, you could put it on a Pi 2 Zero. Um, I'm gonna put it on the lowest uh, Pi that I have, which I think is a Pi 2. Um, if I had a Pi Zero, I would have used that as well, just because it's going to use a lot less energy and it's a lot of wasted potential on something that's a lot stronger. Um, but so far, it's doing a great job. If we go back to Edge and we go to that ad blocker again, it is now blocking 71% versus the original 3%. And again, this is with no additional extensions or anything like that. This is purely using pie hole to block all this stuff and a lot of the whitelisted stuff is stuff that I, I have personally whitelisted using their suggested lists for things like steam and a few things for um, some gaming stuff and even some for shopping trackers that I use to get a little bit of cash back so do keep that kind of stuff in mind and to wrap up this was a very easy process as it usually is Crosstalk's blog and his video are a great resource to use when setting this up. So I do highly suggest them. Makes getting through the process a lot easier. There are a lot of steps, but if you do the steps properly and you follow the guide properly, you should be good to go. It's very, very simple to do. And again, setting up two of these is usually a pretty good idea just in case one goes down. You can set it up on another Pi. You can set it up on your server if you have one. There's a lot of options there for you. With all that said though, I do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Lot Simon Stepback, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any other videos about what I'm doing as set up in my new house, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.